There's a bit of a renter's culture developing here in Australia and it's a group of people that can afford to buy a house but choose not to. And their argument for not doing so is quite a valid one. You see, they believe that they can generate or they can increase their net asset position faster by investing their surplus cash flow than they could if they put it towards a mortgage. Now, while I do believe that there's not one single financial roadmap that every single person needs to follow, I would argue that the majority of younger people out there, then buying a house is still a good thing to do financially, and that is what I'm gonna explain. Hello guys, Brad here from The Guided Investor. Welcome back to the channel for another video. If you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button because I post regular videos about how you can do more with your money. And today I wanna to answer the question, is it still relevant to buy a house? One of the unique characteristics of property that isn't offered to many other asset classes is the ability to borrow against your equity. And just to recap, equity is the difference between what your house is worth and how much you owe on it. So for example, if you had a $500,000 house and you owe $200,000 on it, then your equity position would be 300,000. By borrowing against the equity in your house, you open yourself up to a whole new world of strategies which you can implement in order to improve your financial situation. So for example, you can create a tax deductible loan to reduce your tax payable, you can do a debt recycling strategy, you can borrow for shares, you can borrow for other investments, you can borrow for business. All of these things, when used responsibly, can really accelerate your net asset position, particularly when interest rates are as low as they currently are. Now, I can hear some of you saying that you have the ability to borrow against shares, and yes, that's true to a certain extent, but it's not quite the same. You see, when you borrow against shares, it's very restrictive as to what you can do with the money, the interest rate is normally a lot higher, and you often open yourself up to margin calls, and all of these things aren't a great way to leverage. So for me, if you're young and you have strong cash flow, then a great starting point to build your financial position is to buy yourself a house and aggressively pay down that debt so you can start building equity in that property. In Australia, when you make an investment and you sell that investment for more than what you paid for it, you have to pay what's called capital gains tax or CGT. And now the problem with capital gains tax is that it takes away from your investment return and gives you an overall lower net investment return. But if you buy a house and you live in it as your principal residence, then this is a CGT free asset. So what that means is that you can buy the house, sell it for more than what it's worth, and the proceeds are all yours. There's no tax payable upon the sale. If you hold the asset for the long term, we're talking 10 plus years, then there's a very good chance that you are gonna make a capital gain on your asset. And if you didn't have this CGT free exemption, then you'd lose a lot of your return on a lot of the wealth that you made to tax, which we just don't want. So this is a really unique aspect of owner occupied property that you just don't get with other asset classes. Now, of course, there are ways to structure other assets tax effectively to either minimize or even completely eliminate CGT altogether. But these structures normally come with added complexity or more restrictions. By now, you're probably thinking that I'm just another property fanboy and this definitely is not the case. There are a lot of downsides to property, like there's downsides with other asset classes as well. So with property, you know, it's expensive to buy, it's expensive to sell, and it's expensive to hold. Also, if you look at current valuations in Australia, then property is arguably overvalued as well. However, having said that, I am a fan of diversification. At some points in the cycle, property is gonna perform very well. At other points in the cycle, shares are gonna perform very well. At some points, property and shares might perform well. At other points, property and shares might perform poorly. My point here is that you need to have diversification in your portfolio, and for me, that means having exposure to both property and shares. For someone to say, I only invest in property or I only invest in shares, for me, that's not very smart. I mean, they're both different asset classes and they both have their pros and cons, 
and therefore I feel that you should have exposure to both. Furthermore, by having a mortgage, you also give yourself access to an offset account, provided you structure your loans appropriately. And it's no secret that I love offset accounts. I think they're the best product that banks have bought out. And you know, we all need to hold some cash, um, whether that be for an emergency fund or a future project or something like that. And you can't beat an offset account to house cash. By taking on a mortgage, you take on a big financial commitment. There are gonna be loan repayments that you need to meet, rain, hail or shine, no excuses. And this brings a lot of discipline to your financial situation that you just don't get otherwise. The argument for not buying a house centers around the idea that you're gonna have more cash flow by not having a mortgage. And you're gonna be able to use that cash flow to invest in other asset classes, they're going to produce a better return than you're going to get in a property. And while this all sounds really good in theory, what I've found in practice is that most people don't have the discipline to see this strategy through. For most people, if you give them additional cash flow, they're going to find ways to spend it. Because the problem is, there's no real repercussions of missing an investment, but there's massive repercussions of missing a loan repayment. So for a lot of people, they just don't have the discipline to see the strategy through and invest on a regular basis. And by having a mortgage, it's gonna keep them somewhat a little bit humble with their expenditure. One thing that is amazing about owning your own house is that eventually, when the mortgage is gone, you are going to eliminate a massive expense item in your budget, and that is your housing expense. Now, of course, there's gonna be some ongoing expenses like maintenance, rates, utilities, all, all of that kind of stuff. But for the most part, a large part of your housing costs will be gone. On the other hand, if you're always renting, then your rental expense is always gonna be a significant part of your expenditure. And the problem is the level of rent is somewhat out of your control because you have no control over what rental yields do. If rental prices get pushed up, then you either have to suck it up or go to a less desirable house. As the owner of a paid off house, there is a massive sense of financial security and financial freedom. No one can kick you out of the house that you own. If you want to paint that wall hot pink, then you can. If you want to hammer a few nails in the wall to hang up pictures, you don't need anyone's permission. Your house is your castle, and in your castle, you make the own rules. And that kind of financial freedom and that financial security, you just don't get as a renter. Like I said at the start of this video, buying a house is not suitable for every single person. If you have uncertainty of your income, if you don't know where you want to live, if you're within say 15 years of retirement, then these are all pretty good reasons why you wouldn't buy a house. However, if you're young with a stable income, then buying a house is normally a really good first step on your wealth creation journey. Property offers many unique characteristics that other asset classes just won't offer you. But that's it for me today, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one.